by Dr. N. B. Chalpatrao Garu. I am very glad to invite Dr. N. B. Chalpatrao Garu, who is working as a principal scientist in biocontrol lab at Horticulture Research Station, Ambaji Peta. He had a vast experience in biological control of coconut pests and, and also mango. He is also an alumni of uh, IRI, Division of uh, Entomology, New Delhi. He had a number of publications, nearly 58 publications in pre-reviewed journals and two book chapters and five technical bulletins. He also handled seven external funded projects funded by EPIDA, Coconut Development Board, National Horticulture Mission as PI and co-PI. He had standardized many number of uh, uh, technologies pertaining to the biological control or bioagents in coconut and also in mango. He is, uh, just uh, I mentioned only a few, he popularized the mass multiplication of uh, parasites of uh, papaya medibag, simplified and reduced the production cost in mass multiplication of uh, parasites of uh, coconut black-headed uh, caterpillar. During his, his tenure, he had supplied nearly 40 lakhs of parasites of uh, black-headed ca caterpillar to the farmers which benefited to the number of farmers and also so many technologies pertaining to uh, biocontrol of uh, just biocontrol of uh, slug caterpillar than uh, other pests of uh, co coconut. So to his uh, credit, he has number of awards from his early days. He is a recipient of four gold medals gold medals during his UG program and also Guru Pradhan gold medal during his PhD at IRA for the best student in the division of entomology and also during his as a scientist he had received many more number of awards like Rashtra Ratna award for excellence in academic NCC and field of community during 2015 and Best Scientist Award from Dr. Vyasar Horticulture University during 2016 and, and also Professor P. Kameshwar Rao Award for Best Research Paper in 2018, Professor B. C. Jana Award Best Research Paper from the Society of Plant Protection in the 2016, Edith David Memorial Award during the 2018, and also uh, Anand Prakash Award in 2019 for his outstanding research contribution in insect pest management from Azura Bhuvaneshwar. As a team leader, he also received a number of awards from AACRP, uh, that is uh, Amit Singh Memorial Foundation Award for Best AACRP Center during his tenure as a uh, head of the research station and the Chaudhar Devilal Outstanding AACRP Award in 2014. So, if I tell all this, uh, so many things we have to applaud, sir. So with this, I will conclude and I will uh, uh, heartily welcome Dr. N. B. Chalpatra to deliver lecture on pest management in coconut through biological control. Thank you, sir. Sir, please. Thank you. Yeah. Shall I start, madam? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. So good evening all. It's my privilege to be a part of this uh, Coconut Graduate Ready program. At the outset, I thank the university and the course coordinators for selecting me for delivering an important topic, especially biological control. Uh, Madam has given you in brief, I am Dr. N.B.V. Chalpatra working as principal scientist in entomology in Coconut Resuscitation and Horticulture Resuscitation, Ambaji Pet. I joined in the service in 2000, uh, 2001 and uh, this is my second term at uh, Ambaji Pet. During this time, I think I am very much more happy to work in coconut because this is a crop which provides an ample opportunity to uh, execute the uh, what we have learned in the textbook because i know that as a students we all know that the biological control is an enigma we all think that biological control will work in lab only but in theory it may be practically difficult i was also this opinion when i joined this research institute but to my utter dismay i thought that this institute has provided and this crop has been provided an opportunity to dispel the myths about the biological control. And I'm a practical scientist. I don't believe in uh, 
uh, propounding theories. I will be just going through the practical work demonstrated through biological control in coconut, especially in Andhra Pradesh. And I take this opportunity to provocate as a proponent of biological control to the students who have worked, who are going to listen this topic. And uh, most probably, I think that even though what may, I may say may be a little bit of fancy, but I strongly believe that biological control in the era of organic farming has a pivotal role and a crux of future, future uh, education and environmental security. Coming to my topic, you can see that oh, there are, <clears throat> one second. Sir, please disable the annotation, sir. Somebody is disturbing that. Thing. Ah, coming to the coconut uh, uh, paste, uh, coming to the coconut paste, we can see that there are six major insect pests of coconut, coconut black headed caterpillar, rhinoceros beetle, ereophyte mite, red palm weevil, slug caterpillar, and rugo spiraling white fly. I have given the scientific names also. Coconut black caterpillar is Opicina arnosilla, rhinoceros beetle is Oryctus rhinoceros, ereophyte mite is Isiria gruenis. This is one invasive insect which has entered India in 1998, reported from Kerala by Satyama. And red palm weevil is Rhinchoforus ferruginus, which is uh, which is a notorious pest and is known for killing the palm. No other pest is known to kill the palm, but this once this insect pet, uh, pest attacks, uh, the palm will be killed outrightly. And there is slug caterpillar. This is a voracious feeder. We have never seen such an insect which feeds so voracious slug caterpillar. Once an outbreak of the slug caterpillar occurs, there is a devastation in the coconut plantations. Within a day or two, the entire green foliage has been, will be disappearing. And the recent invasive from Mexico, uh, recent invasive from Florida, that is Central America, uh, Central America, Belize and Florida, USA is Rugo spiraling white fly. So I'll be dealing with the biological interventions, what we made, not we made, not in general, the biological control interventions, what we have and what incursions we could make to the farming community to be adopting those biological control techniques outrightly in the field. Coming to the coconut based cropping system, we all know that coconut is never grown alone. Coconut is grown in combination. The combinations may be, it may be with banana, it may be with cocoa. And uh, it may be with, along with, you can see that boracus palm also is there. So there is a lot of cropping intensity, high cropping intensity in Godavari districts, especially as coconut is known for accommodating few, huge number of intercrops. So we can think that the pests which are occurring in coconut may also have an impact on the intercrops. So what we have to be careful about is that what is the pest dynamics? What are the pest dynamics in the coconut based cropping system? Leave alone coconut, but we have to take into consideration the dynamics of the cropping system before we take about any management activities. And coming to the first insect, what I am talking about is coconut black headed caterpillar. Coconut black headed caterpillar earlier was thought to be regular, not regular, it is only seasonal. Seasonal means it starts in September and peaks up to the month of, uh, especially in the climatic conditions are favorable, it may be, it may be there up to December. And again, there may be second peak when summer temperatures are increasing from March to April. But this is a myth. Why? Because the changing cropping systems, we are, we are, what we are talking about in the next book is that what we have been written decades back. But what is happening right now is that the coconut is attacked by black headed caterpillar continuously throughout the year. Why it is happening? Why it is happening is because Coconut is not grown in isolation. Coconut is grown in those crops, uh, in field bunds, especially in uh, fish pond bunds, uh, aquaculture bunds. So whenever there is a pest, uh, uh, coconut crop is there, the pest is occurring on this aquaculture and fish pond bunds. Once, why this is happening? Why this is happening is because the coconut is having a lot of humidity around it. The fish farmers and agriculture provide a congenial climate, congenial atmosphere for this uh, outbreak pest, especially black red caterpillar, because of continuous humidity present in the that arena. Because of that, we have an outbreak of this black red caterpillar, and it is now regular. We can see the different stages. These are the eggs. This is the green. Uh, this is the caterpillar, which is the devastation and feeding the chlorophyll. This is the pupa, and this is the adult. And we can see they have done a case study because Whenever we say about coconut black and it is an, it is a very good example of biological control. Right during our study days, studying period in UG, we have been hearing about biological control success in black and caterpillar. We had an opportunity to test this biological control on a large scale. Whenever we do biological control, it is limited to a few acres. But right now, what we are, what I am telling you about is outbreak. 
whenever you adopt biological control in outbreak area it is a really a challenge and we have been i'm happy to say that we have taken up this challenge when there is an outbreak of polar black and pillar in 2015 and 16 and this is in 642 to 62 that is out of 100 palms 42 to 62% of the palms were affected and the palms were affected in such a way that all the out of 36 leaves nearly 25 leaves were affected and we can see the agric godavari that is the major district which is going to 1000 hectares west godavari Valdikulam is 80 hectares, Srikakulam is 100 hectares, and Krishna 60 hectares. So this is the vast amount of area. See, more than uh, nearly 1400 hectares of area was a challenge because the earlier recommendations is root feeding with monocrotophores. We know that monocrotophores is red is a red list, and once we advocate feeding, it may have deleterious effect. So what we are proposing is a biological control theory. what is in theory now has to be in practice so that farmers can gain, gain a strong foothold and confidence on biological control so these are the demonstrations we have taken up in two areas especially in allavaram and uppalagupta semru turkulanka mogalamuru godilanka bendamuru lanka n kottapal and chelapalli these are the villages where coconut black hair catapel incidence is found to be very severe and we have taken up an experimental basis on biological control Uh, this is the incidence of black hair caterpillar you can see the green def- green foliage matter has been defoliation of the green excess to right burned leaves and this is the uh, classical example how a black hair caterpillar looks like see you can see clearly that the green matter is very limited to spindle leaf and all other leaves which are should be in green color have looking a gray and burned appearance and this is the case see when a black hair caterpillar outbreak happens it even goes to the nuts and this is the rarest of the rare case and the rarest of the photographs where we can see that when the incidence is unchecked when the incidence is not under control the black hair caterpillar will scrape on everything whatever is green in color it will start scraping including nuts this is the site where the ugly conditions and this is the sign of devastation of black hair caterpillar and uh, as a boosted biological control ambaji peta we have very good laboratory but we all know that lot of constraints are there limitation is especially in, in space so what we have done we have taken a go down see this is the original lab what we had it is nearly 400 sft only and this corsera rearing lab which is the main host surrogate host for rearing black and caterpillar parasites is only 200 sft so with this capacity our lab initially we had a Initial capacity of one cc, one cc of uh, corsera saffronica production. One cc of corsera saffronica production will only result in production of nearly five thousand to six thousand, or maximum ten thousand parasites. But that is not the case. When an outbreak occurs, such is the demand that there will be demand for more than thousands of parasites. Nearly fifty to sixty thousand parasites we have to produce and supply. So what we have done is we have taken up corsera culture, especially and our uh, uh, parasite host, which is surrogate host. and our parasite culture so we have augmented we scaled up our scale of production this is a go down we now seed seed not go down where we have and started our production extensively we have been employing we have been they have been trained they are not at our skill but we made them skilled we i could impart them with uh, necessary minimal training techniques uh, the rearing techniques we could impart them and i am very happy to say that this is at present the by control facility this is in 2015 what i have showed you earlier and this is 2020 so what is happening is that once you show the facilities so this is the facility we have because of the creation of the impact of biological control in the farm what i'm going to demonstrate to you right now so this is the methodology we have followed like every every experiment should have a methodology and we have done that before releasing we will take the the larvae in uh, larval stage and we have to collect the leaf samples we have to assess the population in that as which we done by pet test and the release is really done at 15 days interval at four night intervals and before releasing what we have done is this parasites are exposed to the opisina arnesella host frost because that will tune them to the mindset because they are all lab rare you can see think it as an example a lion in a zoo and a lion in a forest a lion in forest will be having the knowledge to hunt because of innate capacity similarly a lion in a zoo is having that capacity but it has been dumb folded because of the continuous feeding we give it regularly in time so what we have to do is because the lion in the zoo if it has to be made to be active it has been slowly it should be reconciled to the forest atmosphere 
that is done by slowly adapting it to the hunting nature same way what we have done is for parasitoids we are treating it to the smell of opisina arnosella because they are rare on coursera and coursera is a surrogate host and opisina arnosella is the main host and slowly to attune it to field conditions we what we give it to the frost and smell of opisina released in the field we will go on our target insect that is our enemy opisina arnosella and before doing anything we know that we have to give farmers sensitization the farmers more important thing because they have to believe this theory they have to adopt this practice so when we have done a lot of meetings lot of meetings every day field distributions and field meetings nothing is done in lab everything is done in farmers field all our interactions and supply of the parasites we have done at various stages and this is what we go government put and this is the list of the parasites what we have been supplying this has been done not by eloners it has been done by development department of horticulture rawab students and uh, coconut producer societies which are very much active in the farmers and we can see two villages especially what i have stated in red n kotapalli and uh, turpulanka villages where the farm societies are very weak you can see that the total number of parasites taken these two villages have comparatively less except turpulanka n kotapalli is very weak coconut producer society farmers interaction is also very low in that and the results have been propounded in our next slide we we'll see that the larval population 49 larva per 10 leaflets that means each leaflet is having approximately 5 larva this is the mean means each leaflet is having such as the population such as the density of the opisina arnosella population and n kotabali has the highest and you can see samantapur samantapur is 87 larvae per 10 leaflets compared to n kotabali this is very high but you can see after 6 months what is happening when farmers are involved with us when there is a regular interaction and there is a one helping hand from farmer side also we can do wonders so samantapur coconut producer societies were very active they could take our technology to the field at every fortnight intervals they could regulate the parasitic release we can see after 6 months there are only 3 larvae as compared to encotapelli it has also shown impact but comparatively low 16 larvae so what i propose to say is that whenever we do any technology farmers are foremost farmers to go hand in hand we should move with farmers and this this uh, slide shows the example where a farmers intervention if done along with a uh, governmental organization will have to have fruitful effects and the farmers intervention is poor the negative will also be flowing accordingly so in kotapalli and turpulanka these are two villages where we had very less very very less uh, impact but in samantapur and bendapur lanka we can see in bendapur lanka there are no larvae at all because this is one coconut producer society which has done wonders they have been regularly monitoring the pest even though we have released fixed rates as 15 days interval they have been telling that sir larval stage is not there don't release now such was the activity of the farmers and where we could do wonders with the farmers and very profound and this biological control is very slow acting as you know chemical control may be very fast but biological control is slow and steady always with the race so after 6 months only we could get the result but once this 6 months result is going to stay in long not only larval population we can see the pupal population because larva transformation into pupa is also one of the parameters we take about the control because all these what we have released goniages and bracon are larval parasites you can see that samantapur and chelapalli villages which are also having highest number of pupal population slowly dwindled except in turpulanka and enkotpalli these two villages we can see where, where farmers activity is bit low the results are not so encouraging but still there is a prominent control because they are also release parasites but not to the expectations as in as not our expectation as it is happening in other villages and similarly the paralyzed larval population this is one parameter what is very very vital because larva one may be statistically varying but when you take a paralyzed larva that means on field collection of a paralyzed larva we can see before our release there is no paralyzed larva in the field very low actual parasitization is there but after 6 months you can see in turpulanka 5.2 and in enkotapalli 3.7 why this happening there is that because the pest is there because we all know natural enemies are density dependent <coughs> even parasitic predator is also density dependent when we have most pest then time will have more paralyzed larva but you can see after 3 months bendapur lanka the most promising village has 7.7 paralyzed larva that is extremely extremely good count natural recovery of 7% of a nat uh, natural enemy is very very good count in biological control naturally we have 2 to 1% but here we can see that more than 7% that is excellent results we had obtained at bendapur lanka village and this is one of the rarest photographs where i can boast of 
where natural parasitization of goniogenesis nefarious is where black rat caterpillar by goniogenesis nefarious is being taken up you can see this larva is paralyzed sterilized i think not paralyzed coma it is in coma virtual coma and this goniogenesis nefarious have a very peculiar nature of parental care it means it is just like our human beings just like our mother once it lays eggs it will stay near that uh, paralyzed caterpillar for 2 to 3 days or at least a week to know its progeny is developing or not this is one progressive character and one retrogressive character also because once the parasitoid works on it we expect it to move to other uh, another host but in this case what this parasitoid is does it stays along with this uh, this is maternal care or parental brood brood nature it we have but still it is very good proposition in biological control where we can see that nearly 16 of its eggs like if a caterpillar is a good size nearly we can get 60 to 20 natural enemies of goniogenesis nefarious progeny from one single caterpillar and they will be developing slowly on their own and slowly dwindling the black red caterpillar population and this is one more bracon habitat <coughs> this is one more natural enemy parasitoid we have you can see how the shrinking of biological control act how the shrinking of this opsina arnasella takes place when these parasitoids they paralyze it they come out of its body these are all the cocoons of and these are all the cocoons you can see very great examples naturally acting in the field this is not lab rare they are working in the field these are the wonders of natural enemies once we have confidence in them they can do a lot of benefit to us and uh, this is the gardens you can see before i was showing you all the gardens this is the gardens and these are the gardens of 6 months you can see under 6 months is not a small period 6 months is a large period for farmer but for biological control is very small period once we regulate our parasites releases i think biological control for opsina arnasella which is holding good for ages will stand further ahead and conclusion we can see that the population has decreased by 100% of the 6 months 3 months up to 94 33 to 94% is the pupil population decrease up to 100% of the 6 months parallel larval population recovery this is more important in terms of biological control up to 26% we have recovery in 3 months and up to 34% we have recovery the impact is more where coconut producer societies are active this point we made it very clear to them and from there the day onwards all the coconut producer societies moved hand in hand with our institute i'm very happy to say that this success story was also brought out in under icr indian council of agriculture research you can just type black lighter caterpillar andhra pradesh you can get this under success stories of icr website and we even what the farmers perception because whatever we say that should be told whatever we say it should be told by farmers not by us and it has been the document has been prepared with the farmers perception what they feeling about biological control and it serve as a future guide this has been given along with their phone numbers those are all interested you can also i can circulate it to your course coordinators you can also have a soft copy of this bulletin you can speak up on to the farmers about their impact with the biological control coming to the second phase most important phase what i am talking about is a macroplectan area that is a caterpillar earlier we thought it is a sporadic pest we all know sporadic pest means which comes here and there in, uh, whenever there is an opportunity whenever there are climatic conditions are favorable but of late this is becoming a regular pest we can see continuous outbreak when i whenever i say sporadic pest it may be not a regular outbreak will be there but we can see changing climatic conditions are making this pest more regular and along with its regularity also creating havoc to the farmers because of its devastation in feeding these are the total acre is approximately affected by this coconut slug caterpillar and this is the west godavari district you can see the continuous outbreak in hot spot areas we can see some areas which are regularly affected by this slug caterpillar and the area is also very high 650 acres hectares is not a 650 acres is not a small area in terms of coconut and this is the feeding i was telling entire devastation only midway is left entire coconut foliage is defoliated nothing will be left and this defoliation will also lead to sink source relationship will be very poor lot of button drop will be there and then uh, the bunch bearing will be very poor bunch buckling will be there and uh, once this curse caterpillar affects uh, attacks there will be no yield up to 1 to 1 and a half such is the devastation caused by this pest and not only on coconut it also affects oil palm arecana banana cocoa palm you all as i told you coconut is causing system is a complex and one pest which attacks one crop can also move to other crops and devastate that crop also see so you can see the damage of coconut slug caterpillar on cocoa this is the type of feeding when the population outbreak is there and what we have done because we know that in coconut spraying is very difficult what we have is we have scouted for a very natural enemies we have identified so many natural enemies like apantelis peristrocrisis 
Uplectrus, Uplectromorpha, Eurotoma, Eurotoma thyroid Parkinson's, Eurotoma monomony, and when the endopathogenic fungus is specially menacinous. And uh, off late and latest 2016, we had pedobius imbrius. And uh, even though we have identified so many parasitoids, how to mass multiply and give it to the farmers? Because unless you say that you are having a culture with you, unless you say that you don't, you will be supplying the parasitoid at the time of need, the farmer will not resort to chemical control. Otherwise, he'll go to chemical control. So what we have done is we have tried to rein our parasitoids. These are the photographs I told you, peristrophysis, apparatus. All these are present in the nature, but regulating to a limited content, like 1% to 2%. But our outbreak is really 100%. And uh, even though we say the biological control is very good, well, well, it's only good when we see all these photographs. But how to help farmers when the outbreak occurs? And then what we have been, we have done intensive surveys. We are of the opinion, we can have to find one parasitoid where we can mass multiply it and supply it to the farmers. And uh, this is the hotspot area of sweat caterpillar. And we all know classical biological control. Whenever a pest is there, at the same spot, we can get the parasitoid. One good parasitoid, Pedobius umbrius. I think you all remember Pedobius mobilitis. It is used for Hadda beetle. It is exported and is sold in huge rates in USA also. It belongs to the space, same genus, but not species. It's Pedobius umbrius, much more native to India and the coconut ecosystem. We could identify in Kuduru, Veeramasaram, and Pilimantra, Palakodir, Mandal, of West Bodhara district. And this is the parasitoid. What is the impact it creates on select caterpillar? We can see. How it paralyzes the coconut slug caterpillar, how it makes it, and this is the culture. This is the culture and the emergence of the parasitoid on the, uh, on the nucleus culture of this parasitoid in our lab. And then what we have done, we have started this mass multiplication. It is a trade secret. If you are interested, I will share with you because till date, no one has understood how I am maintaining this culture in my lab. It is an enigma, but I will reveal it to you if you are interested only when you ping me personally. Otherwise, I won't reveal how I multiply this parasitoid. I'm very happy to say that I have a nucleus culture of this. I'm regularly maintaining this culture in spite of lack of, it won't grow on Corsera. It doesn't have Corsera as a host. It doesn't have any other host, laboratory host, but I'm having this culture with me. That is a trade secret. I tell you later only. And they have the release rates we have done. See, whenever I say I have a parasitoid, I should see how many number I should release it. So that I recommend to the farmers, what is the frequency of release? So three experiments we have done in fields. We have released it at the rate of uh, nearly 12,000 for 55 numbers of palms. Excellent, 55 numbers we have given. And see, earlier I was telling recovery rate is very low, 34% I got in Opusina. But here you can see that I got up to 41%. This is very nice, high natural recovery of this parasite. Till date, I urge that this slug caterpillar could not establish successfully after 2018. I would have, you would have noted that I have not given the acreage in 2019-20 because after 2018, we have mass multiplied this parasitoid. Whenever there's incidence of coconut slug caterpillar, immediately farmer friends will come to our lab, pay the amount, requisite amount, take the consignment and release in the fields. And 15 days, you, I, you won't believe it, 15 days, it will do wonders and regularly uh, coconut slug caterpillar. And this is one more experiment we have done this in uh, another garden. 50% is the recovery I got here. Not only on coconut, but in oil palm also, this is a devastation pest. So that I'm very happy to add one more armory of biological control for plantation crops, especially by name of Pedobius imprius. Thank you. And this is the field recovery. See, whenever I do, whenever I go to the field, I'll try to, I'll try to see whether my parasite is working or not. I will try carefully, I will check each and every sample patiently, I'll bring the samples to the lab, it will take huge time, really huge time, days and days I'll scout each and every sample, we will take the recovery studies also, you can see, these are the egg laying of Pedobius imbris and slug caterpillar, excellent, excellent egg laying, and this is one rare natural enemy, where you can see that naturally parasitized slug caterpillar by Pedobius imbris, which we have released in the garden, and all this you can get, I already published all this literature, you can get that paper in Best management in horticultural ecosystems in 2017. And uh, one more devastating pest, which is very much uh, dangerous for young plantations, especially below five years, is rhinoceros beetle, which have a traditional V shaped cut. And uh, <coughs> what is that? Why is rhinoceros beetle increasing? Is that there is a regular cyclones are there, then there is a regular failing of the real estate, and then if there is the FIM pest, there is vermicompost, where we are proponents of organic farming. And the deadlocks which are fallen are not being removed. So all these are making this rhinoceros beetle breed like anything. And once this happens, 
how to manage it because egg plantations are being affected and then we had one very good baculovirus culture that is oryctus rhinoceros uh, for our oryctus oryctus rhinoceros baculovirus we have and we have done one experiment on uh, utilizing metarhizum and oryctus baculovirus release so what we have done is this oryctus baculovirus uh, we had lab culture we have infected beetles of rhinoceros beetle but in uh, and uh, nearly these are the numbers of the beetles infected under lab conditions borivanga kutuma bairpuram nagula katrepuram these are the villages where we have taken up the demonstrations of releasing infected beetles and this is the, you can see healthy beetles are having a different color and infected beetles are having a different color this is the main uh, identification step you said they are creamy white they are dullish white and this is the where, where we can inoculate the virus inoculated food is fed by the adults and these adults also transmit them in the field and this is the grub culture what we are maintaining for oryctus baculovirus nucleus culture and uh, you know this is the methodology where this culture is extracted from these grubs uh, fed to the fed to the adults and these adults are released in the fields and farmers are should be convinced because when we know that we are releasing an insect the farmers will be worried why is it releasing an insect which is causing damage to the farm but these are all are infected beetles and then you can see the data see there data in terms of leaf damage that is 35% has come down to 85 this is the one of the lowest damages but you can see that in all other places also there is a continuous decrease see biological control doesn't totally give you 100% control it will regulate the pest naturally it will strengthen the biological control agents in the field and over a period of time slowly it will act and this is mainly important because a natural regulatory ecosystem should act everything should not come in hasty it should have a balanced impact should be there in the environment and this is happening with biological control after 12 12 months after 12 months because you know coconut is a perennial crop it stays nearly for 50 to 60 years yield and i think 12 months is very small period for that one year is very small period farmers can easily wait and this is the tremendous impact we had once on the leaf damage and this spindle damage spindle damage is a central leaf damage what we really account and take into consideration from 45% has come to 10% that is a phenomenal figure in terms of uh, rhinoceros beetle damage decrease you can also see that in kutuma and in uh, arthrepurum it has come down even below 10% so all these are one of the successful demonstrations of biological control in field and you can see that the conclusion that 32 to 49% the spindle damage decrease is there and 65 to 70% spindle damage decrease and 30 to 49% in leaf damage However, main main predicament we have is that maintenance baculovirus culture. There is only one lab in India which is having this baculovirus. That is two to three grubs are there. That is in CPCR at Kaingolam, where my uh, close friends, Dr. Joseph Raj Kumar and uh, Chandrika Mohan, Madam, are this having this culture. And uh, right now, I am very sorry to say that even after maintaining for two to three years, I failed to continuously have this culture. You all know that. Virus is lives. Uh, virus can be multiplied only in living things, just like in coronavirus. even though they say that they have some longevity on non living objects this virus especially lives in living things and that living thing is rhinoceros grub and maintenance of rhinoceros grub is very very difficult these days due to paucity of labor also but in future if any one of you interested you can definitely carry out this lab culturing of this virus also this i have published in journal of plantation crops and you can go to the paper if you are interested and coming to the area of it might and this is the electron electronic microscopic photographs and there is lot of predators are reported like della this their amblyses neoceras paspalivorus these are all predatory mites but there is one entomopathogen that histella thompsoni still there is a dogma about this efficacy of this histella thompsoni which is mainly location specific because there are lot of strains of entomopathogens and very few strains which are localized may work very effectively and this is a kerala strain which we have brought and tried to work out in andhra pradesh as well see sometimes biological control also may not work wonders because we should have your local strain and uh, when i brought from kerala from cpcr and try to have that culture here earlier in 2000 we had one pdb system that is nbr strain but even that didn't work properly so main thing is that the area of it might is concealed beneath the perian and uh, this fungus or predatory mites we find it very difficult to enter predatory mites can enter only after 3 months but once this conditions are favorable uh, entomopathogenic fungus can enter even the first month along with the mite but this may happen only when there is some conditions are congenial especially humidity and temperature should be there and uh, uh, we have native strains of that entomopathogen in our environment and so what we have done this experiment like spraying of hirsutra thompson in three times and then spraying two times along with the 
botanical formulation neemal garlic soap and spray, spraying of palm oil sulfur we have compared this to, along with control you can see that overall mean overall mean we can see that mite population is there is no variation no variation at all because mite is concealed by the variant and whatever we are spraying that may not be reaching the mite so what we have ultimately found is that there may be some predator count you can see there is good impact so naturally predator should develop naturally hirsula thompson it should infect but any externally application of hirsula thompson may not have a desirable results this is also a good finding because we can recommend to farmers no need to spray anything for hirsula perio fitment because spraying is also a costly <clears throat> costly expenditure and once we say that spraying is not working farmers will wean from spraying so one good result what we got is no need to spray anything for area of it might leave it as it is improve the standard farm especially fertilization grow intro crops apply neem cake maintain palm health that will take care of palm and generally we can see this as compared to 2000 now the intensity of might has really uh, reduced considerably earlier we have 70 to 80% infestation now we have 20 to 30% so nature has its own balance but it may take time and uh, coming to the latest and uh, uh, uh last pest i will be dealing with this pest day after tomorrow much more in uh, specific but because biological control is also working on this i just touch it and uh, elerodicus rugo percolatus all of you might have been knowing this rugo spiraling white fly right now it has been uh, we got it from florida it was origin is in belgium in 2004 it has vast host range especially for plantation crops like coconut and oil palm we can see that it is having more impact especially on banana also it can grow on mango cashew all ornamentals and what we have done is we have one good parasitoid entarsia gudulo entarsia gudulopi ironically this parasite is absent in andhra pradesh what we have done is we have introduced it from tamil nadu kerala and karnataka and um, successfully we couldn't do it initially it is established very well and one what is the identification is that black color parasitization black color of the pupa is telling uh, the fact that it is parasitized and the yellow color is showing the non parasitized so what is what is happening is that this entarsia gudulopi though it is promising it is not to promising to such an extent that it can take care of entire elerodicus rugo percolatus population on its own so there is some more impact we have to have other bio control agents also and we can see then once we have released this encarsia we can see that during summer especially when there is a high temperatures even though rugo spiraling mite population is there that the encarsia could not be fail to survive so this acclimatization problem is also there all these are all these have to be closely observed studied how to develop temperature tolerant or how to how to have a temperature tolerant strains of or parasitoids that is also one of the main um, impending questions we have in future and uh, regular release of parasitoid consignments is also there and then we have one good and uh, entomopathogen just like pseudomyces we have one sari fumes or osea uh, and then we have very good predators also on that which are naturally occurring but very low in number and one good predator which i'll be discussing at length the day after tomorrow is this potential predator called as dicocris aster this is a synonym and uh, the accepted name is sudamallada aster and uh, this this thing i'll deal in uh, rugo spiraling white fly class uh, day after tomorrow much more in uh, length and who told that biological control is not a good exchequer you can see that right now right after 2014 when we started pricing of our bio agents like my price is bracona bitter is 50 paisa goniojo stamina is 75 paisa pedos embryos 50 paisa corsaira saflonica 1 cc x is 100 rupees per private firm 60 rupees is government firms and then chrysoperla jastrovis elipi it is uh, 150 rupees for 1000 x then uh, sudamallada aster the cost is 1000 rupees 1000 x 150 rupees and then trichogramma kailani is 1 cc card is 150 rupees all these are priced all these we have priced and we never thought that by pricing that we are able to realize a good income but i don't say that this is the income this is the receipts this is the uh, faith farmers have reposed in biological control see if i say that biological control is working how to make it make you believe it see my lab has nearly supplied 1 crore this is from 2014 in 2014 september 9th we have first priced our parasites until then it was free of cost right after 9 from 1947 to 2014 we have supplied free of cost but from 2014 our former vice chancellor honorable vice chancellor dr bmc reddy sir has told everything has to have a value otherwise you don't bother about it then we started pricing at a low rate even though pricing at a low rate also have real, made us realize this much amount i am very much happy to say that now our lab is self sufficient we have orders from all over the states 
uh, orissa we have from gujarat tamil nadu the supply if you don't have a supply what is the fun of boasting of a biological control lab who is going to supply to farmers if you say that i have a good parasite but you are unable to supply you should serve the farmers you should serve the farmers means you should supply the parasite i'm very much happy to that my staff and our uh, university is supporting us in form of inputs to maintain these cultures day in day out and 24 by 7 uh, our lab will be open because we know corsera sapolonica doesn't have a sunday or a holiday uh, i'm extremely thankful to all those hard working lab staff who have made this cultures alive all through these years and also made an impact of biological control in field and have derived sufficient receipts for the university to sustain biological control and impose faith of our farmers friends and people and students like you who if you want to be a venture capitalist in future you can take upon this as one of your components of your uh, future plans as an entrepreneur and uh, we are always ready to help you out in any cultures or any training programs on meteorologies to multiply i have right now seven cultures with us and uh, nothing is impossible only you should have a passion you should work with commitment and uh, definitely i think uh, our uh, entomology or coconut coconut is much more more useful because we have very very limited insecticidal impact we all know monocrotophers is a red list and uh, root feeding with monocrotophers we have to wait for 45 days that is with calorimetric technique with hpc i think with 10 days we can say but still it is deleterious so we have to wean out of chemicals from our system ultimately if you wean out chemicals what are the alternate supplements you are going to give to the farmers it is nothing but this bio agents so we have to have faith we have to win the faith of the farmers and we have to stand out as an example by proving it in the field the result of biological control then only we will have a strong impact of biological control in coconut ecosystem which has been there in centuries when we are proponents of this theory and we are proponents of this practice and only one pest i am very much sorry to say that we don't have biological control that is red palm beetle even though there are some epns this is an internal borer and very very hard to have a biological control agent for this but i think regular scouting initial identification of the symptoms and uh, resorting to green label insecticides can only help and uh, in future i believe that if any one of you can have an answer for this red palm we will that will be a turning turning day in the history of coconut ipo especially for biological control because this is a dreaded pest which can kill the palm now oh, i sincerely thank our university cpcra nbar coconut development board department of horticulture and of my staff uh, ambaji peta for maintaining this culture supplying the farmers and right now for providing me an opportunity to at least present a few slides on coconut especially management for through biological control thank you one and all hello sujanta madam Uh, conclude yes students do you have any doubts sir you can ask madam chat box le unna questions vachaya em raaledu in chat box lo we have already posted if anybody has questions you can post in the chat box i think yes, students that... those who are in zoom you can ask questions sir will clear your doubts anybody so you understood everything about pests of coconut in youtube chat box also there are no questions okay Sir students if you already... don't have any questions then we we'll... <laughs> So somebody has posted one question just now so he want to know about epn species for coconut uh, pests any epn species for coconut pests uh, epn actually we have a telling na actually there is one root crop problem it is not there in uh, andhra still we have some more insects like corid bug is there then there is some root crop white crops are there white crop is much more problem problem in arica nut in coconut we have very low low intensity of uh, root crops and white crops especially epns work only for this white grubs and root grubs uh, we have only that stain nema heterodapids only these two are used as epns and even for red palm weevil and laboratory conditions we have this uh, stain nema and heterodapids 
they are uh, used earlier as uh, um, yeah, promising epn nematodes but right now we have commercial cultures but they are especially is ex exclusively used exclusively exclusively used under uh, uh, agricultural conditions but not not under this thing uh, not under uh, coconut conditions we don't have this problem thank you sir hello madam another question was posted now what will be the standard temperature for epn multiplication standard temperature for epn multiplication sir epn multiplication the epn epn multiplication should be done under lab and it release rates are based upon the number of juveniles and it has to be the soil released you have to have a a uh, host for it the host can be either corsellaria saffronica or wax moth greater wax moth uh, galeria melanolica uh, the standard conditions are as per the regular what we have the temperature is 26 plus or minus 2 uh, temperature and relative humidity 65 plus or uh, plus or minus 5 these are the standard laboratory multiplication conditions we have for every insect we have but only we should have that uh, uh, for epn's maintenance you should have that uh, sterile water technique everything and you have to have uh, some refrigerated conditions and you can uh, you can maintain easily maintain this uh, nucleus cultures you can easily maintain under laboratory conditions but field application you have to do only when under soil can soil uh, conditions uh, and uh, you can use even sublethal doses of uh, some beneficial insecticides like prior to release of epns especially imidacloprid okay sir thank you uh, padma i think you can conclude now sir thanks a lot sir for your wonderful and splendid lecture it is the need of, for students to have practical knowledge you have told all the success stories mainly the use of parasitoids and the awareness of farmers about these parasitoids at field level thank you very much sir thank you thank you my pleasure my pleasure thank you one and all thank you sir thank you